kids, welcome back to Children's Church. I'm Ben. And I'm Jenna. And we're excited to learn another lesson from the Bible in the book of Philippians with you. Yeah, it's been a few weeks since we were in the book of Philippians. I kind of forget some of the things that we studied. Mm -hmm. I think we need a review. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Review, review game! game! Awesome, let's get to it. First question. Who works in us to make us want to obey and able to obey? Hmm. What do you guys think? Who works in us to make us want to obey and able to obey? Hmm. If you guys said God, you are correct and get one star. Remember that in Philippians 2.13, it says that it is God who works in us both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We are responsible to do the obeying and he helps us. Ah, oh, that's great news. Awesome, so question number two is, when I grumble, who am I focusing on? Hmm, do you have your answer? If you said myself, you are correct and you get one star. When we grumble, the focus is on me and what I want and my interests and not the interests of others. That's right, you're absolutely right, Jenna. Are you guys ready for the third and final question this week? Here we go. When we obey and become more like Jesus, we shine like blank. Hmm. hmm. What do you guys think we would possibly shine like? If you guys said light, you are correct and give yourself a star. God wants us to be like Jesus and stand out like stars in the night. When we shine in the world, God gets all the glory. Awesome. And that's exactly what we're called to do. Yeah, you're right, Ben. Good job. Um, so we've done three of our questions. Let's count up our stars. So if you got three stars, what should we do? Hmm, I think we should do three awesome dabs. Are you guys ready? Okay. One, two, three, three awesome dabs. One, two, three. Good job. Good nice job. <laughs> All right, for those of you who have two stars, what should they do? Hmm, I think we should do two seconds of what I like to call the jelly head. One, two. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, and for one star, what should they do? For one star, I don't have my pharaoh beard anymore, but I'm still Egyptian. Sure We're doing the Egyptian Woo! dance. Ready? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Good job. I think we need a little more practice. All right, and then what about zero stars? For zero stars, you're gonna give yourself a big, oh. giant hug, sit real close, and pay some close attention to this week's lesson. All right, let's get into the lesson. Let's do it. Let's think back to the book of Philippians and what Paul has written to the Church of Philippi so far. If you're like me, you can start to forget that each lesson fits together as part of a big, bigger picture or story. Yeah, Paul's writing to the Philippians to encourage them to live a life worthy of the gospel, which means to live a life that shows that Jesus has changed their heart. And he gave us lots of good examples of what that actually looks like. So let's see if you can remember some of these words. So unity, working together, having one mind with no disputing. Or love, loving one another so much that it overflows. Or service, helping one another without complaining. Or lastly, humility, thinking others as more important than yourself, or putting their needs before yours. Does all that sound familiar? Some of these words were mentioned in our previous video. Remember hummus? Mmm, <laughs> oh, now I'm hungry. And then Paul showed that Jesus is the ultimate example, and that we need to work hard to become like Jesus. But it's important to remember that we can't do it on our own. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Jenna, that's just like exercise. You can have an energy drink, to give you the power to do the work. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. But you still have to do the work yourself. Let's look back to a previous lesson where Paul encouraged the Philippians to shine like stars. Have you ever been out at night and looked up to the sky and seen all the stars? They can be really bright. Mm. So people who have been changed by Jesus are kind of like stars. They stand out. You're right. 
it would be really awesome to have earthly role models um, to get an idea of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when we're learning a new skill, it's really helpful to not just do it, but watch someone else do it. I remember when I was learning how to shoot a basketball, it wasn't just enough to read about it or have someone tell me. I, had, I needed someone to show me where to place my hands, where to stand, and how to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, we really need models to follow. Yeah, that's right. The good thing is, Paul gives us some models. So in our lesson today, in Philippians 2, 19 to 30, we learn about two shining stars who are great examples of humble servants who God uses in their everyday lives. Their names are Timothy and Epaphroditus. Bless you. Need a tissue? What? I didn't sneeze. That's his name. What's his name? Epaphroditus. Epaphrohuha? Epaphroditus. Kids, you try it. Good job. You try saying that four times fast. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> so let's look at the lives of two stars and learn as much as we can about how they are humble servants. Jenna, this looks like a job, a serious job, mm. for the F-B-I. Do you mean the fun Bible investigators? Yes, we need them right now. Yes, this is, yes, yes, I understand, it will be taken care of immediately, we'll send our reports and our findings, thank you, bye. Hey Jameg, we have a new mission. Our new mission involves two suspects, and we need to find out if they were humble servants, were they truly shining like stars? Copy. So we will need to look for humility, service, unity, and love. You got it. Let's take a look at some evidence we have on our first suspect. First suspect is Timothy. We will go by Timmy for short. All right, Agent Al, let's look at the evidence. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare, for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with, with a father he has served me in the gospel. I hope therefore to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. Agent Al, I've noticed that Paul talks very highly of Timothy in this passage. He says some really nice things about him. Let's take a closer look. In verse 20 it says, For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. That's a fancy way of saying that Timothy cares for people. He cares about their health, their family, how they're doing, and especially their spiritual growth. That sounds a lot like love. Do you agree? Affirmative. Let's have a look at our next set of evidence. Let's have a look at verse 21. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Looks like others were seeking their own interests, but not Timothy. If my detective skills are correct, I would say that Timothy is seeking the needs of others before his own. Hmm. What does that sound like? I would say humility, being humble, lowering yourself and making others more important than yourself. Good observation, Agent Al. Let's look a little bit deeper at verse 22. It says, He has served with me in the gospel. We know that Timothy has traveled a lot with Paul, and where they went, they served the people there. Since they traveled a lot, I bet they had many opportunities to serve. So, that seems like very strong evidence for a, a servant heart. You are absolutely correct, Agent Meg. Let's have one last look at evidence for this suspect. Back in verse 22, we read, But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father, he has served me in the gospel. Now, a dad and a son relationship is very tight and special. We can almost say that Timothy is uh, Paul's spiritual son. Mm -hmm. 
And working together with Paul, it shows that Timothy is united with Paul and they are working together, going after the same purpose. Mm. Would you agree, Agent Meg? I agree 100%. I think we can check off unity. Excellent. So, looks like we've checked off all four boxes. According to our observations, we can conclude that Timothy, or Timmy for short, is a humble servant full of love and unity. Agent Meg, let's use our detective and research skills to have a look at our second suspect. For our second suspect, we have a male named Epaphroditus. We're just gonna do fro for short. Let's have a look. Let's read the evidence. All right, open your Bibles. Philippians 2, 25 to 30. I have thought it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death, but God had mercy on him, and not only him, but on me also lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Agent Meg, I am intrigued by our second suspect. This guy sounds like a real champ. Looks like Paul and him have a special relationship when he calls him brother. Paul says some other interesting things about him. Let's have a closer look. Let's have a look at verse 25. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker, and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. Hmm. From my personal investigative skills and experience, tells me that Fro must have been really united with Paul in his mission to use such intense words as soldier and fellow worker. Mm -hmm. That's another way to say partner. It seems like they are working together with unity. I'm going to go ahead and say check for unity. Well done, Agent Al. Let's look a little bit deeper into verse 25. It says and your messenger and minister to my need. Hmm. Fro was caring for the needs of Paul. Paul was in prison, we know from earlier in the letter, so he had needed lots of care probably while he's in prison. So Fro was putting the needs of others before his own. Hmm. He was caring for Paul. And according to my calculations, that adds up to humility. Shall we check it off? Check, check. Let's have a look at our next piece of evidence. Let's have a look at verse 27. Verse 27, he was longing for you. Wait, who's you? Hmm. According to my research here, I would say it's the church. Okay. Sounds like Fro really loved the church. I mean, he traveled far to deliver a message so that the church could receive a letter of encouragement and instruction from Paul. Hmm. You have to really love someone to be able to make that kind of sacrifice. I will go ahead and mark... Check for love. Fantastic. That was really smart deductive skills, Agent Al. Let's look at our final piece of evidence. I think we have some more to learn from verse 30. It says, For he nearly died for the work of the of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Hmm. Did you notice earlier that he got very sick while delivering that gift to Paul? He hmm. risked getting sick to give encouragement to Paul with that gift and to deliver a message back to the church of Philippi. Now that is sacrifice. It even says that he nearly died for that work of Christ. That is truly a servant heart, I'd say. Can we check off service? Check, check. There you have it. I think our research reveals that Fro was a humble servant full of love for his church and unity for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Affirmative. I think if we sum up all our research, it is safe to say that we must conclude that these two were indeed shining stars. Couldn't agree more. Mission accomplished, Jason Meg. Our job here is done. Thanks, FBI agents, for helping us. 
whoa, those guys are so cool. I know. Especially the one with the beard. Actually, I thought the one with the ponytail was the coolest. What? Oh. No. Oh. Okay. Anyways, so we discovered that these men, Timothy and Epaphroditus, shined like stars and Paul wrote about them because they were humble servants full of love and unity. Mm. What awesome examples they oh, are. That's so true. They are great examples. Mm. But we need to remember that they weren't perfect. They still made mistakes, but they point to someone who is perfect and the greatest example. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus. Jesus left his throne in heaven and came down to earth in humility. He lived a perfect life of service and he was always united with God the Father. Because of his great love towards us, he died on a cross to save us from our sins. And he was raised to life to give us eternal life. That's right. We can only truly shine when we have a relationship with mm -hmm. Jesus. He comes into our hearts and helps us shine. What about you guys? Do you have a relationship with Jesus today? Have you asked him to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life? Have you decided to follow him and ask him to uh, help you live your life as a humble servant? Mm -hmm. If you have it, we ask that you ask your parents, ask questions and find out about this Jesus person that um, we are talking about today. All right, let's think about how this lesson applies to our everyday lives. So we learned that Timothy and Epaphroditus were really humble servants. Mm -hmm. Paul described them as great role models. So let's think about the role models in our lives. Who do we look up to? It's really important that we think about who we try to imitate. Mm -hmm. Can you think of examples in your life of uh, humble leaders? Maybe someone in your family or someone in our church. It could be a parent, maybe a mom and dad, or it could be a sibling or a friend. It could be even your grandparents. Hmm. When I think of a humble servant, I think of my dad. He's always available when I need him, and he sacrifices his time to help me with projects that are too hard for me. Wow, that's so cool. When I think of a humble servant, I think of my mom and how she invites um, Arabic speaking women into her home. She'll make food for them. Mm -hmm. She will love them and she will even teach them about Jesus And I think that's just so cool. That's awesome. We're really blessed to have these role models in our lives Can you think of role models in your lives? Hmm. Yeah, now let's think about you um, In what ways can you be a humble servant and show other uh, love to those around you? Yeah, and remember that even if they're not a your actions, your humble serving is not appreciated or noticed, God notices, and it's for His glory. Absolutely. Let's pray, guys. P-R-A-Y. Dear God, thank you for these examples in your word. Help us see the needs around us and be humble servants full of love and working together. Amen. Amen. Well, that wraps up our lesson for today. Thanks for joining us. See you guys next time. Stay humble. We love you. Ooh, Bye. Ooh, ooh. Adios.